Hey friends, can you imagine getting a compound annual growth rate of over 500% on a regular basis? Well, in today's special video, I'm going to be talking specifically about how to design a trading system that will that'll allow you to do that trading some of our favorite ETFs. And so plug in, watch the video all the way to the end. It's a short one and uh, it'll give you some great ideas for how to make bigger profits going forward. So let's jump into today's session right now. Remember, like it and share it. Aloha. How to, perf how to perfect your aim, target shooting, entries, and exits. So again, I'm using the same quote by Mark Douglas. And Mark Douglas uh, basically is talking about, you know, the behavior of patterns that repeat themselves with frequency. You know, and Mark Douglas actually says in some of his books, is become a master of one. And, um, and that way it cuts down on the distraction. And if one will focus on becoming a master of one, it really, really takes the pressure off because then it's either you become more binary to basically say it's either a yes or it's a no. Be careful using that term these days. Huh? Um, <laughs> anyway, so a range bound stock and ETFs can provide repeatable profit opportunities and provide the following. Um, one, they can help you reduce the risk. Uh, simply because you know you're specifically trading within a particular area. You know, by learning how to trade and target shoot entries and exits in a range bound stocks and ETFs, you can one, take advantage of predictable market moves, reduce your risk, and what I really like, compound your returns, even if you're in a sideways market, especially using the, um, uh, the leverage ETFs like TQQ. So in today's session, I'm just going to basically explore the features, advantages, and benefits of trading a sideways trend, as well as provide some practical strategies uh, for success. So let's go ahead and kick, get into the benefits of this. Uh, so one, reduce your risk. Define price range. This is very interesting. And one of the things that I really like is with the leverage ETFs, they tend to run in ranges that are normally somewhere between five to 15%. So if we're looking at cutting out the middle section of that, that uh, move for profits, we're looking at somewhere between a four to seven to 8% uh, uh, move. And think about that. And oftentimes they'll go on a run and they'll go back and forth and back and forth for weeks. I've seen them go that way for months. Uh, a friend of mine traded, uh, uh, I think he was trading, I want to say UPRO off of the S&P several years ago, and he got stuck in a price range of 10%, and it ran that way for about six months. And it went up and down, up and down about seven times. He captured the the about 7% of that move uh, up and down, you know, up, and then he would, we would take his profits off the table, then wait. And as soon as he got back down to his, his, his trading uh, criteria or his order criteria, he'd get back in and it would run up again. So he did six trades that compounded out at 8%. So I'll let you do the math on that. Uh, and it was over a, uh, just a several, you know, two or three month period. Really nice way to compound. Next. The opportunities for profits, you know, traders can take advantage of price movements within the range by right, buying at the support and selling at resistance. We'll get into how to define that here shortly. Then flexibility. Your range bound trading is a flexible strategy that can be used in various market conditions and you can adjust it because oftentimes what you'll find is that when a stock or an ETF has a personality or a character uh, of running in a, uh, 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 in a range bound uh, direction, it will slide up to a new level and then go back into the same type of pattern running between a, a set low and a set high. It's, it's really remarkable. And so that you want to watch for that repeated uh, characteristic with the, what you're looking at trading. 
And they're really great if the, if the range is wide enough to be able to trade options with, because you can lay in your target shoot your options at the bottom of the range, which with whatever tra- uh, option strategy you want to be utilizing, give yourself enough buying to make sure you buy or sell enough time and then take it off when it gets back up to the top of the range. <clears throat> so here's the steps. I want to identify the range bound market. I want to determine uh, where my support and resistance levels are, set my entries and uh, uh, entry and exit points utilizing conditional orders. My risk management is basically determined right off the get-go in my, uh, in my conditional order. Then I monitor the trade and I adjust the strategy. Now, when I say adjust the strategy, what that this type of trading is designed to do one thing is basically you buy at the bottom, you sell at the top. And it's not really designed to build a position. Now, some may want to buy a little at the, if they think that, let's say you think the entity is going to go and eventually break out to the upside, you can use it to build a position where you buy at the bottom, sell part of the top, and then hold on to the rest of it. Buy at the bottom, sell at the top, hold on to a little bit. And so you're actually building a a position up so that when it does break out, you can you can go along for the ride and let your winners run. So that's another thing. Work that into your strategy and make sure you write your strategy down. Range-bound trading requires flexibility and adaption uh, adaption to changing market condition. Of course, traders should regularly review their trading strategies and adjust them, as I just uh, gave an example, uh, on a regular basis. In other words, you don't blindly just throw it out there. So that's what a range bound looks like. And we're looking to target shoot where? Buy at the bottom, sell at the top. Now, some traders will actually do both. They will go both ways with this. And if you are trading the leverage ETFs and inverse ETFs, you do have the capability of doing just exactly this. We can buy at the bottom. When it gets to the top, let's say this is the... leverage bullish ETF, when it gets up into this zone up here, this is when you flip it over and buy, okay, B-U-Y, the leverage inverse ETF, because it's going to act the opposite of that, and it would be at the bottom of its range at that time. So just put that as, you know, put that as part of your potential strategy, and then you can go I, as I said, both ways. So how do we target shoot? So here's a, here's a, a picture of uh, TQQ going back a few years. Now you will see TQQ here and it says it's only $1.93 or 93. I did this with the uh, uh, on demand. And the reason it shows that it's such a low level is because uh, it reflects all the splits that's happened with TQQ. Uh, so range bound, uh, target shooting. So what are we looking at doing? One, we want to identify the ranges. And it will start to show up. Now, I've covered up what happens over here because I want to highlight it starts showing up after prices have come out of a zone, ran up, reversed back down. This gives me my first clue that I may be going into a range-bound trading opportunity. So again, here, I want to say, okay, I'm at support. So I'm triggering off of my regular, uh, if I want to trigger a trade on this, I'm re- triggered off my regular trading opportunity. We do there is I determine the levels of support and resistance. There they are. And remember, the support and resistance is a zone, not a specific line in the sand. It's a zone. So in in this in that zone maybe one to two percent wide, and I want to then determine well I want to set my entry and exit points with conditional orders, and that way I can leave them in place. And so if I were to be you know wanting to buy here, I would want to be buying in that zone on the next candle. Now I don't know if it that, that you know I don't know if I were you know if that filled or not. 
but that's where I'd wanna be laying in my order on the next candle to buy if I pull back into the wick or into this zone. My profit target would be up in the pink zone, probably fudging towards the lower level of the pink zone, simply because I want to sell on strength. And once it gets up into that pink zone, it's when the sellers are gonna, we know the sellers are gonna come out. And so if you know where the sellers are, let's just plan our trade to get out before the sellers jump on board. That way we sell on strength and, um, and, and it's a lot easier to get out of the trade because once it gets up into that zone and starts to reverse, that's when it's a scramble to try to get out. And that sometimes can be very uncomfortable. So what else we got going on here? There's my orders and I wanna manage my risk and I wanna monitor the trade and I adjust my strategy as necessary. So then what happens next? The other thing I wanna know is I wanna know approximately what, how big a move this is from one zone to the other. And in this particular case, it's 14%. What happens next? How? And as you see, I would not have gotten filled if I would put my numbers down in here. I would have had to stay flexible enough so I had a gap and go. I needed to be buying above that level. There's a couple of ways you can do that with this particular trading strategy. One is, is if I already have that candle in place, I can do just buy on a breakout of that candle there or have an order to buy if it falls back down into this level here. You'd have two orders in place. Because the expectation is, is that if I break out from here, I'm going up to here. And as you see, that's exactly what happens. I go on up to this level there. And so 14% move, that was my first move. Now at this point, what happens? Well, price action started to roll back over and pulls all the way back down. So then I get a pullback again and a reverse back up. This turns out to be my second move of 14%. So what am I waiting for? And what I was doing, once prices got up here and reversed down, I don't do a darn thing other than just set an order waiting right down here for it to come down there for a potential bounce. Again, my stop loss on this order is immediately below that level and it's really, really tight. Next is I come down and hit it one more time. Reverse, back up. So a third time, uh, I hit my profit target of 14%. And then from there, this is an example where it breaks out and continues to move on up. This trigger, and how? what was the timing on this, which is a really interesting thing. 14% moves three times over a period of 33 days, generated a, a compounded return of 48% for that 33 days. It's the annualized rate of 556%. Now, you know, so we're not going to have one of these every month, but if, just think about it. If we found one, just once a, one a year or two a year, that would be an excellent opportunity. So Mark asked a really great question. Could we, I'm assuming if it got up here at the top, could you buy SQQ? Yeah, Mark, you sure could, but I would suggest, you know, getting good at just one side of the trade first, and then, you know, where that's profitable for you, and you're just banging it out, banging it out, banging it out with, with good profits, and you know how to manage it, and all that kind of stuff, and then add on another layer, which in this case, if you want to do the SQQ. Good, this is a good question, though. That basically is it. That's that's how you plan and design, and so uh, those type of trades. So let's go ahead and so so in conclusion, one trading range bound stocks or ETF can be profitable and low risk trading strategy suitable for various type of market conditions, especially in the kind of market that we're in right now. By identifying the support resistance levels and setting clear entry and exit points, you can take advantage of this predictable move within the range. Uh, and one of the biggest reasons why I see people fail at this strategy is they don't have the patience. So the patient, the strategy offers uh, traders flexibility 
reduce risk, opportunities for consistent profits, whether you're a beginning or experienced trader. So, so here's a couple of questions for you. So how can you, how can traders identify rage-bound markets and what are the key technical indicators to use? Each one of us has to define that for themselves. Now you get a copy of these slides and you can check these questions out on your own. Number two, what are some of the common mistakes traders make when implementing a range bound trading strategies and how can they you avoid them? One, how can traders use options and uh, trading strategies to enhance their range bound trading? And what are some of the key considerations you should make on your options? And then one, number four, what are some of the challenges traders face when trading a range-bound strategy and how can they adjust their strategy to remain successful over the long term? And there's our disclaimer. And, and that's the end of the slide. Anyway, aloha, God bless. I will have this up a little bit later today or first thing tomorrow morning. So have a good evening, folks, and we'll be chatting with you Friday for the live session at 12 noon Pacific. See ya. Thank you, Dennis. Bye, guys.